Those sirens are pretty terrifying. It's no joke though, with the world becoming an increasingly more precarious place, it's become more and more important to think about having a backup plan in case there's a total grid failure. And I'm not just talking about power. You might have seen on the channel, I've done loads of solar stuff and sort of off-grid power setups. I'm talking about completely off-grid communications today, and that's why I want to show you this. So this cool little device, guys, is basically an off-grid messenger device. So it requires no internet, no infrastructure at all. So it allows you to do two-way messaging with other people that have got these. Let me show you how they work. So what we're looking at here is we've got two of the devices. We've also got two smartphones. Now these smartphones are disconnected from the internet. You see that one's got the flight mode on, but they have got Bluetooth turned on because these are connected to each device by Bluetooth. So very simply, this phone is paired to this device by Bluetooth and this phone is paired to this device by Bluetooth. Why do we need the phones? Well, you sort of need a keyboard to actually type messages and that is what this app that we're looking at is here. So if we type a message in here, so we just say hello from Andy and then we hit go, we should see it pop up there and you get a little notification. Now that has happened completely wirelessly, not between the phones, it's gone from the phone to this device, out over the air, over radio waves, back into this device and then it's relayed the message on here. And that works two ways. If we just go high from this side, you can just hit that button and, and then we get a message immediately on that screen there. And we also see it on the device. You can see this one's got the message that I sent first of all on there. So how cool is that? I can imagine the comment section now, oh, it's not off grid, is it? Because we're using phones. Okay, look, just to reiterate, the phones are not connected to any infrastructure at all. No Wi-Fi, no cellular, no nothing. So effectively, your phone is just like a bigger display and keyboard for this device. And if you want to completely free yourself from a smartphone, there are devices like this that have keyboards as well. I'm waiting for a couple from AliExpress, actually, but they haven't turned up in time for this video. But that's going to be something I'm going to show you soon. Now, the next question is going to be, that's all very well, Andy. You've put them on the desk side by side. They're only about a foot apart. Of course, they're going to work. What happens if you're further apart? What's the range of these things? Now, you might have heard of a thing called LoRa. LoRa stands stands for long range. And basically that is the modulation technique that these use to send information over the air. In this case, text messages and, and data. And the thing about LoRa, long range, is exactly that. It's supposed to have a very long range. From my experiences so far, it's pretty impressive. Let's show you some little tests that I've been doing. Right, so I've stuck one of the devices in the window. We're up pretty high up here, so it's got quite a good line of sight out there. And the other one, I'm gonna take with me. As always, my favorite way to do range tests out on the e-bike. This is actually a new one. If you wanna see a review, let me know in the comments. Anyway, I'm about 100 meters from home now, so I would expect this to work, but <laughs> who knows? Um, let's just test that out. So when you send a message, you get like a little uh, tick if it goes through, and it has gone through. What I think I'll do is I'll just type in the messages of where I am. So like end of road, like that. Um, and then when we look back, we should be able to see where we are kind of thing. We're all good. So what you can also do in this app is if you hit this button here and it will show you all the other devices like this in the area. Now, before you start freaking out and going, no, there's loads of them. There's actually loads of them everywhere. Who are they all? Um, most of these are actually mine because I'm a little way into this experiment now. Anyway, let's go a bit further up the road. Right, so next stop, I'm down in Harting for a brewery, which is about 0.2 of a mile away. So let's just do my little test here. Hartingford Brewery. For Brewery. There we go. All right, and then we'll send the message. And that has gone through. So yeah, what I was going to show is another little trick. So this is that list of nodes in the area. If you hit trace route, you get a result ping back like that. And that's like a little range test ping you can use to see if you're in range without having to send a text message. Right, I'm now at the churchyard. So this is about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 miles away. I think something like that. So I'm just going to punch in church. That'll do. <laughs> and then we'll see if we get through. Perfect. No problem at all. <laughs> it's pretty insane, isn't it? Right, let's carry on a bit further. It's blooming freezing today, though. By this old disused railway bridge now. So this is about half a mile away. So I'm just going to put in bridge on there. And we'll see if it actually gets through. <laughs> no problem at all. So I'm now about a mile away and I'm just gonna send a little message here. See if that goes through. 
I mean, I was that close to the antenna as well, so I wasn't helping the situation really. Um, there you go, it's gone through. So for the radio geeks out there, you can actually see the RSSI, that's like the signal strength. And that is very, very low with quite a lot of noise. And that's what's amazing about this. It can work at very, very low power levels, even though there's loads of noise as well. This is pretty insane. Next location up here, and there's quite a big hill in the way in between us so i wonder if it's going to work it's just sitting there doing its thing um so i'm going to say oh, i don't know where we are probably what one and a half miles miles just do that and then we'll know what it is and it's gone through <laughs> i can't believe it I mean, it's not even thinking about it. It's just going ding straight away, which, you know, I've seen this system before where it has, where it has to try a couple of times to actually get through in really bad noise environments. But this, this is crazy. Right, guys, I'm about two miles out now and it's still working. Look, I've done a little ping here and I want to show you something interesting, which we're going to discuss back um, in the studio. Look, can you see here on our little trace route, we've got another station in the middle, which we've connected through. So we start off here and the M6JK, that's my amateur radio call sign. Then we're hitting this Meshtastic 9624 node. And then that is forwarding to my home location that I've been doing the test with so far. How has that happened? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Right, just got back. It is so cold out there. But you can see all the messages that I sent are all there. As you'd expect because they were delivered as well so there you go how interesting is that so you can see here guys it actually works it works brilliantly and all this just on a tiny little antenna that's actually inside here it's it's unbelievable laura just has the ability to sort of just get a signal through when probably nothing else would so when i mentioned in that little bit of video that i'd connected through another station you could see you know it went from me to another station to then this home setup here well basically i've been fiddling around with this a little bit longer than i made out originally um, i've now got quite a few of these around and the way it works is they basically form a mesh network so what that means is the more of these that you've got the more the network can expand. So you could have these dotted out every mile or so, and it will relay your message across to the, to the one at the end, or not. You could talk to any of the ones in the group. So this is called mesh networking, and that is the biggest key to the name of what this system's called. It's called Meshtastic, and it is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, I can't begin to explain how impressed I am with this system from what I've seen so far. It really is incredible. And it's not that difficult to set up or use either. These little things here, you can pick these up on Amazon. There's a few setup steps and you're basically up and running. You could just put one of these in your window and then you could be part of a mesh network and then start communicating with other users and also people in your own group. And of course you can set up private networks as well and they're encrypted. So I'm gonna do a lot more content on Meshtastic guys because I've been playing around with this for about a week now and I've found out quite a lot of interesting information. You can use external antennas on these as well which makes the range even greater i think the world record for the longest contact is about 160 or 180 kilometers i can't remember but it's a long long way and the great thing about this is because it operates in a license free band it's completely license free you don't need a ham license to run this you can just literally be anyone and you can use this so it'd be so cool if you could join in as well guys just grab a little mesh tastic node like this one this is a little Helltech one as i say they're available on amazon ebay you can get them from china as well really really cheaply just set it up shove it in the window and who knows we could end up turning this into a massive off-grid wireless network with no reliance on cellular or internet or anything like that our completely own off-grid network how cool would that be now another thing if you've been dabbling with cryptocurrencies that sort of stuff you will probably be aware of helium now helium uses LoRa as well it's a completely different system to this it's not designed for messaging it's designed for for cryptocurrency but you might have antennas up for that already and they can be used for this because it actually runs on 868 megahertz the same as helium so if you've got helium antennas you can use those also there's hundreds of antennas for helium uh, for mining that sort of stuff on ebay and amazon so you can easily just grab that stuff and it's cheap it's not anywhere near ham radio prices mind blown yeah i was when i found out about this just it is it is pretty crazy to think and that so i'll let you digest all of that and i'll catch you in the next video <laughs>